Morning everybody. It's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me today. What I'd like to show you today is in Australia at the moment we have Coles, which is one of our grocery stores, giving away just little books. They're the little treehouse collection. You get them free with their groceries. We're getting lots and lots of them because the kids always pick them up. Or if you're just a journal aficionado, you can just get them yourself when you get your groceries. What I'd like to show you today is how you can change these into beautiful little altered books. Very quick and easy to do. Great for your stash or great for gifts. They are just the most wonderful little bit that can be done from a giveaway. Okay, what I've used for this one is, because they are so small, I found that I was just using my little paper pads that you get, you know, your, your eight by eight inch, your six by six inch, six and a half, etc. Um, and I have quite a collection of these floating around. So for this one, I just used the Prima, one, it's a very old one. It's a fairy one from years ago. But as you can see, lots and lots of pages. I've used very little from it for this. But everything out of this is from there, apart from the tags. This one's double-sided, so it gives you lots of leeway in picking your designs. So for today, to start another one off, instead of doing exactly the same one, what I thought I'd do is pull out another old one. Now, this is a Kozakraft one from five, six years ago. The thing about the paper pads is that when you open them up, everything's going to match. So that if you're unsure about setting things out and all the rest, find, a, find things that match. So your paper pads, your paper packs that you'll find where they're already done for you and everything matches so you can know you can just pull them straight out of the book and it's all going to go together it takes that guesswork out for you so all i've done with this one is i've pulled the pages that i want out and there's lots and lots of pages still left in so and we're just going to sit them aside and we're going to start off our little book now, as I said, just a straight little book to start with. What we want to do is to be able to create our pockets, but without having a lot of bulk in there. We're going to tear some of our pages out from between where these ones stick. So we want an outside cover, like so. We want to pull them up over, and we want to tear at least two pages out. Depending on the book that you're starting with will depend on how many pages you pull out through your little books. So what you've now got is the front of your pocket, the back of your pocket. That'll make one. Now you need a front for your pocket. We're going to pull two out again. Make sure you've only got two. One, and two, and then you have a back of your pocket. So what we've done is we've taken those out like so, and left a small gap between where your pages were. You'll continue to go through that all the way through your book, and what you'll end up with, like this one, you'll end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pages, or eight that you'll end up gluing together. So you'll have 16 sheets in there. Okay, so once you've done that, you can see where they've been torn out from. If they don't tear out wonderfully well, these ones torn out, just try and tear them out a little bit easier, but don't go all the way through your stitching. These look like they're stitched or glued. Try not to pull away the whole book so that you'll just go through one 
two, we're ready for our front cover. So you're grouping them in groups of four for this one. Now, if I'm starting a big journal, I tend to work my way through and I'll put paper clips on them, whether they're torn out yet or not, and I'll put paper clips so that I know where I'm going because it can get very confusing sometimes if you're looking at a full book. And I leave those paper clips in and then I'll just tear as I go as I'm working my way through my new journal. So once you've got all that done and dusted, I've done in steps today. Right. So we're now all torn through. What we want to do, if you have a look at the top of your book, it's all glossy. You run the risk of your glues not sticking to it to make your front cover. Okay, so all I do with my, you can put a small layer of gesso over it. For me, I just tend to use a bit of a sanding block, sandpaper from the hardware, sanding blocks from craft stores. You can see that this one's getting extremely old and probably needs replacing. So it's just a matter of going over so that you're scruffing it up a little bit. Takes that gloss, takes that full shine away, and it allows something. We're not woodworkers. We can go in circles if you like. Um, and it allows something rough for your glue to adhere to. So it'll keep them on the page so much better. Doesn't take long. Takes longer when you're talking. Okay. Now, give him a wipe. If you've got an old cloth, wipe him over. If you're wearing jeans, jeans work a treat. Wipe it on your jeans. Right, so now you've got him all scruffed up, ready for it. What we want to do, so here's my front. I like to ink mine. Um, so you can see, same colour book. I'm not into the stark white. That is just personal preference. Okay, so for me, I ink around my edges. If you like the stark white, by all means, you don't necessarily need to ink. These are all inked. This is what it was. So for me, I like to ink. When I ink my edges, I use Distress Ink. I use my brushed corduroy. It's just personal preference. I always work with brushed corduroy and with antique linen sitting in front of me no matter what I'm doing so I'm just going to go around working my way around it's lovely squeaking noise on this cover making sure I do down my spine okay now I want to do this side as well I found that it gets a little bit hard with my brush so I have a glue I have a, a sheet here that I use for all of this. And I'll just sit him in there and it makes it a little bit easier so that I can get right up to my edges. Keep putting ink on your blending brush. It's just a straight blending tool. Round in circles, work your way down. My ink's starting to get a little bit dry. Um, time for a re-ink or a renew ink. Probably because I think I drink them, I use them so much. Especially brushed corduroy. I find it's my go-to colour for all of my journals. Straight down. Don't forget to do in that same again, because what you're doing is making sure it's down in that part down there. Okay, so what you've ended up with is that. That back on there, and I'll just wipe where I used my brush corduroy there. So, what I want to do is cover these two pages with pattern paper, plain paper, pattern paper, anything you like. This is where I use my paper packs. What I've done with mine is pre cut them to around about five centimeters by eight centimeters. So, yeah, pull them over. So I've pre-cut these guys 
five centimeters to eight centimeters, which is round about what you need. What it'll do though, is it'll give you a starting base and then you may need to trim down, depending on where your spine has ended up sitting. So see this piece? My eight centimeters fine because I like my gap through it. But what I wanna do now is mark, it doesn't have a measurement, sorry. I always do this, I'll just mark it and then I can trim it to where exactly I need it to go. Now, what I've also done with my pieces, didn't do that one, is I've inked around again, because I like that. That piece, look, this piece hasn't been done, so. But because I've now trimmed down here, he'll need re-inking again, because I've now got this raw edge. So with my little pieces, I use antique linen. It's personal preference, okay? You could use anything. You know, if you're, let's say you're using the same paper pad that I've picked up, which is this one. Now you could have inked all these in greens or pinks or, you know, picked out another color from through here. For me, I picked out the browns in the roses because I'm always looking for somewhere to add browns, but that's just me. Okay, so he's just gonna go on like so now. Nice and easy. Oh, another one of these messy ones for gluing. Glue stick. Okay, I use the blue glue. You might have your own personal preference. I use the blue because then I can see where I'm going. And I don't have to squint too much to see if I've covered it. When you're going to pop him on, I turn mine that way because it's this side that your eyes are going to go to more than the spine. So it's that side that you want nicely lined up. So top, bottom, and side. I will then use a piece of old sheet okay and give him a good push if you're working on a larger journal you can do it that way or you can use a brayer and actually brayer over them which gets that the the slight bumps that it might have been um wrinkles if you've used a wetter glue and it'll just really adhere them and flatten them out right so for this side i'm going to use this one again you can see that he's a little bit large. So again, I'll put a mark on there. Back down to there. Trim him down. Okay. There to there. Now I've actually left a little bit of that mark. So I'll take him off. I will ink around him like I did with the last one. Now I haven't inked any of this one. So we'll just very quickly ink around all the way down. Going round. Straight round. Okay. Now for this one, if you notice with this, I've actually got a stamped image on there. Just a hint, if you want to pop a stamped image on them, it's way easier to do it now while it's in a single sheet like that than once it's in your book, okay? It's just a little bit of forward thinking because once you've got it in your book, if you're using stamping platform, if you're using wooden stamps, acrylic blocks, anything, it's hard to get them in here. The further you go into your book, the harder it is again. So if you're thinking of putting a stamp on there, now is the time to actually do it. So once again, just my foam, um, upside down mouse bat if you don't have foam, otherwise a thick density foam. Sitting him down, 
this is my stamp. Now, my stamp that I'm going to use for this one, because I've picked the roses through this um, paper pad for my embellishments and all the rest. This is a very old one, and I have a tendency, just a tip, when you pick up a stamp that maybe you haven't used for a little while, that's been sitting there and you're not using it all the time, always pre-stamp it. Just give it a practice stamp. Because sometimes we might have stamps that don't stamp perfectly first time. So with wooden ones, what it'll do is then remind you of where you might need to push down. So this is this stamp. So you can see when I pre-stamped it, it's just on a piece of scrap paper, but round about the colours of these, it was just a pink, just so that I could see how this could work out whether colour wise, because I'm using archival ink in the tree branch. See how it doesn't quite like the R? So it just reminds me then when I go to stamp it, I need to put a little bit more pressure on that area and then I get a perfect stamp. Okay, so unless it's a stamp that you're using all the time, every day, whatever, always give it a practice stamp. Right, so with this one, take my ink pad to my stamp so that everything's nice and flat. I know that my R and the type of the row, the top of the rose might need a little bit more ink. I would say that it's a little bit indented in there and that's why it doesn't stamp perfectly. But knowing that means that I'll put a little bit more ink on that bit. And when I go to stamp it, so I'm just going to line my stamp up with that, putting it in, I'm hoping you can see, and I will give this bit a little bit more pressure because that's where it was. So it doesn't mean that I can't use this stamp anymore, but it just means that I need to adjust for that. And then fingers crossed, yep, what you'll end up with is still your perfect image. So my stamp is still fine. I can still use my stamp, but I need to remember before I go on my perfect papers that I'm using that I may only have one of, always check your stamps first. Right, so this guy is now stamped. We can glue him, again, back with the glue stick. I'm hoping you can, you're in shot for that. Straight on. Again, the outside edge is what's going to be drawing the eye first. So that's the bit you want to make sure is spot on. Sticking him down. Okay. All right. So there's one of our pages done. This is where we've torn them out. This is our next page. So I've inked around, I haven't done in my spine. So I was using brush corduroy for these. Remember if you're using two types of ink or two colors of ink, remember which one you are using for which. So it's just a matter now of going down my spine, just so I don't end up with a big white edge through there. Putting that on, putting the lid on my glue for a moment. Right, so I'm going to do this bit and I'm going to do this page. Then I'll show you how we might even do the next page. Right, where are we going? We want next colours. Let's go into the pinks again. So again, I've cut these to my eight centimetres. Sit you on. Work out where I want you to go. Now, I actually pre-cut. Oh, hang on. Look at that. I've already got some here. And here's some I prepared earlier, already inked. Um, as I said, I pre-cut these to five centimetres by eight centimetres. I then actually got all those pieces that I used for the inside of the book and laid them across a piece of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. And you will get all of these at a one sheet. The only thing that you will need 
extra four is for your outside covering. So all of your pages, you'll get out of one sheet of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. So that's what I mean. It doesn't, you've, these books are free. They're sitting there and a piece of scrapbook paper could cost, what, $2? So it's not a very expensive little gift at all. I'm going to glue you in. I think I'm on an angle there. It's all right. All right. So I'll glue you in. Again, the outside edge is what the eye is drawn to each time. So that's the one that you want to be spot on with. Popping your rag down. And also wiping your fingers. We'll go the opposite side. Let me go to about there. It will take me to about there. And then we'll start gluing some of these pages together. And you can see what we mean by how easy they are. So we're going there. We're going there. All right. We will remember to ink down the edge that I have just trimmed up just so that I don't end up with a raw edge we will re-glue uh, okay so again our outside edge popping him down a sheet. Right, so what we've got now is one and two pages done. We're now going to make these into our little pockets. So grabbing my, this time I'll use a wet glue. It's just an express it. There are lots of wet glues out there. Um, it's just personal preference. Or what you can get your hands on at the moment right make sure he's coming out so what I want for this one decided I want top pocket always decide what pocket you want before you glue it so I want a top pocket with this one so where I'm going to glue my two pages together will be down the side and across the bottom okay so the easiest way to do this you just want a fine line of glue. These are tiny books. You don't want too much coming out at once. Close your book. Give him a good squish. Now, when I do them, so you can see they're now joined, I tend to get my old rag and just make sure that there's nothing oozing out the top. Stops it then going into my book and it also, with the rag, stops it going all over my fingers. You will also need to check in the spine, top and bottom, just to make sure that you haven't all glued all that. Right, so here's my first one. I want to make a pocket. So I've found that it's easier. Now, if you look at this top pocket, I'm going to pull you out. When I did my first one, I just punched that. What I should have done was gone through both. This still makes them very hard to get out unless they're these top, low, top, top high ones. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually punching in through both. Otherwise, I would have punched it prior to adhering it. Now, just a circle punch, opening him out, sticking him in about halfway, going straight through. Because I've then trimmed this guy, I now have a raw edge with no ink around it. That's just me, okay? Whether it's OCD or what it is, that's just me. Right, so now what you've made 
Now, if you look here, is your first little pocket. Okay, one pocket. Ready for a tag. Done. Your next one, we will very quickly stick something on that one. Pull that out. So your next one, let's have a look. And this time we'll do a side one. You should always remember to do up the lid on your glue. I put a big ribbon on mine, on the lid, so that I could actually find the lid and remind myself to do up the lid on the glue. Hasn't worked. I will still come back in as later to find my glue sitting there and the lid nowhere to be seen. All right, so you're going to go there. What I'm going to do is ink around this guy just very quickly. Oh, this ink's starting to get dry too. All right. Okay, so we'll glue this one in. What you'll do is you'll then make your way across the entire book and stick in your patterned paper or pretty paper, whatever you want to use for your pages and then glue each of your pockets together. So you're going to go about there, in like that. All right. Now, the other thing you can do, make sure it's stuck down. There we go. What I usually do as well is, and I didn't do it on that one because we were just being quick, is with my ink, tuck him in there. This is what's going to be my pocket. You've seen where it's all torn. I will use my corduroy because I'm going for a side pocket this time. Down like so. And down like so. So that when you actually open your pocket to get your tag out, you're not just seeing that white again, but as I said, that's me, because I don't like the white. So now what we can do is we can stick these two together. So because I want a side pocket this time, all I'm doing is going down those small sides. Yeah, the light. Oh yes, now it's there. Oh, I was not done for too long. So one there. One there, closing my book. Okay, so now I've got a side loading pocket as well, making sure our sheet will do that. This time I'm going to give him side one. Can go in the middle, can go either side. Raw edges, again, I'll ink around those. So now what I've got is side pocket, okay? Work your way through your book so that once you've got all that done, and here's one I prepared earlier, is your pockets all done. So I've gone top with one, side with the other top side top side now you can see what i mean if you wish to stamp something in there stamp it prior to it being stuck and there's my little book now we've still got this on the outside edge and this is rather hideous so in my my paper pad is this one as well which is where I got all my colors from as I said I've taken the browns out of this you could take any of these colors I love this piece now what I want to do is work out where I want I 
think I want that piece across there. So my book, if you look, is round about eight and a half centimetres. So what I'm going to do is trim this down to about nine centimetres so that it's still a little bit larger, which gives me a bit of wiggle room, but I'm not having to work with the full sheet. So I'll go down to the nine centimetres and I'm just going to trim. That's now scrap that I can use for embellishments. So I'm just going to trim so that I've got a smaller piece that I'm working with. And I'm going to wrap him around like so. Trim off the rest later on. Now, I have some of those inks. What I'm going to do with this one is use a combination of my wet glue and my glue stick. So my glue stick in the centre, just to make sure it gets a really good hold. And I'm going to do it bit by bit. I found this is the easiest way to work your sides around. And now it's gone. All right. Come on. Nothing. Let's get a pin. Always have a pin handy. All right. Now we'll go. All right. So this time I'm just going to work my way around and I'm going to do all four sides. I'm going to go right into here. Okay. Oh, just can't hurt. Right. Doesn't matter if you're over a little bit. You know you've given yourself some wiggle room. So as long as you cover it, Okay, so we're just going to cover, giving myself, oh, that's fairly straight on that, beautiful. That's scary, that doesn't happen very often. All right, give him a nice push. See, I've got some glue coming out. We're just going to deal with it as we go. All right, now. In here, in here, in here. That's where your spine sits up. So we need to be able to make sure that it's sitting right in there. Now we want to go down here. Can you see that? Okay. And we're going to go into that bit. This one through my centre and down into my sides. Like so. Okay. So now, hang on to him. So I'm hanging on in the centre, which gives me a good grip. So I can push my spine down and then going over and down because I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room I know I've got excess top and bottom that I can trim off shortly so give him a good squeeze because you don't want a bubble up this end Okay. Again, push him down. Make him nice and flat. Checking with glue or if you've got bubbles coming through. No, nope, he looks fairly... See how he's all in here? This one will need having its crease done on him as well while they're still wet. And it'll adhere down because that's our back crease. Okay. That won't take long to dry at all. And then we can trim him off. Now you can trim him off 
with a blade, you know, ruler and a blade. You can use scissors if you're happier with scissors. It's whatever it is that makes you happy. You can use a combination of both. Don't think that one or the other is what you have to do. Okay, nice little embellishment part there. So now we can sit in there. So you can see I've got glue in there. I'm sorry about the noise. That's my dog. Awesome. She heard other dogs outside. <laughs> See, I've tried to get the rest of the family to be quiet, but the dog is the dog. Right, so we're just going to trim this guy up. You take it to there, then you can turn it around and go back in. Now, what I'll also do is I will ink my edges. So if I've got any rough little bits, like this, the inking will hide all that for you as well. So straight up here, and over, and in, and back down as well. So now what you've got, double check that you've got no glue coming off, and you've got your little book. This is now ready to embellish, and it is so easy to embellish. Now, as I said, I'm going to use a little bit of ink just around my edges. It softens my edges. Doesn't, And if you've gone a little bit wonky with your scissors, it'll hide a multitude of scents. So, just through here. my dog again <laughs> that's because nobody else is taking any notice of <laughs> right here we go all done nearly finished from that it's just a matter of choosing oh, here we go choosing your embellishments choosing what you want to put on it okay so these are just scraps of just a plain cream cardstock. That's what I used on this one as well. I find cream works with just about anything I'm doing because I tend to ink, as I said before, in those colors. Again, think of what it is you're doing, the pattern that you're doing, think of the colors that you want. So for me, I've got this. I've just used a background stamp in milled lavender. So my two colours that I've done that have gone through have been spun sugar and milled lavender. And then I've stamped on them with my tree branch again. So that what you end up with, when I can sit him in, <laughs> And my tags that'll sit in. So, all right. Now, this is again out of this paper pad, and you can see, and I've just fussy cut around it. What I want to do is stick him down here, which will make a little tuck spot. So, you can see he's a little bit larger than the patterned paper at the moment. What we're going to do is just trim him off. So matching him up to where your pattern paper is. Trim him straight down. Again, you're just using the paper that you had. If you had some 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, you'll have a little bit left over. That'll give you some embellishment parts as well. So now we've got this. What I want for this guy... <laughs> Let's keep the book up the right way. What we want for this guy is use him as a tuck spot. So for me, again, sorry girls, I ink. Just want some ink. Now this paper pad had gold through it as well. So when I've cut that out, you can see I've left a little bit of gold 
around the edges. Um, so I'm not going to ink too much around my gold. I don't want to dull my gold. So when I do this one for a tuck spot, it's like one of these top loading pages. I'm going to go down, down, and down with my glue again, which has been sitting here without, oh no, here we go. And so it's been sitting here without a lid again, so I may have killed it again. You might find you have more success with double-sided tape. If you're going to use double-sided tape, try the really thin one. And remember, you're going to lose more in your pocket area. So straight down, matching him onto that one, pushing him down. Using your cloth again to pick up any excess glue. Because we don't want all our pages to stick together. And down. Now what we've got is a little tuck pocket. You could pop anything you like in there. Another little... Now... You can use the back of these as little journal cards if you're giving them away for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Show you another very quick before we finish. Um, I've got, I've got, <laughs> and I moved it prior to starting. The dog's happy now. Got a little butterfly stamp. Right, show you very quick and easy top no i didn't do it on that one show you a very quick and easy top mounted tag that'll give you a little bit of difference so what we're going to do with this guy we can use our stamp platform this time let's just do something different i'll show you three different ways of doing different we're just going to sit you on this now you can see with my rubber stamp i want through the center of this. So I've actually marked a little bit on my foam here and here so that I can see where, so I've got lines on my stamp platform. If I'm using a, an acrylic block, I'll use one with lines as well. So going over, I've got those foam markings on my lines. Just gonna ink him up. Coming across, give him a push. If you've stamped fine, you can finish now. If you need to go back and re-stamp him, you can with the stamp platforms. You, you can with the acrylic blocks, but phew, how good are you? Okay, so what we're gonna do with this one, just gonna move you out of the way now, is, see this? Now you, Find it might be easier to rule him if you're doing it with scissors. So what I've gone is between my wings, cross and across, and then I'm going to cut round my butterfly, but just to those wings. Now, when I'm cutting my butterflies. I'm sorry, girls, I cut the antennas off. If you wish, by all means, keep your antennas on. I am I like fussy cutting, don't get me wrong. It's one of my favourite things, but I really can't be bothered with antennas. So, right, down to that line. And over. From the line. Now you can be as rough or as ready as you like. Round my butterfly. So what I have now, minus a few pencil marks, is a little tag so that when it goes in my book, let's see if we can find a page, I want him to stick out like so. So this tag is a little bit long. We'll trim him off. Now your tags will all be the size of your pockets depending on your glue. So I could give you an estimate 
but it will only be an estimate if you're working on these books and if you're depending on your glue. Right, where are we? Just here. Now, if we tuck you in there, I want him a little bit lower because all I want is my butterfly wings to show. As I said before, you can always take off more. You can't put it back on. So, straight down. A little bit more. That's cheap. I like that. <laughs> it's just something I would normally never do, but for that. So now what you have, let's tuck this one all the way in. So my butterfly. How easy was that? Okay, so it's just a matter of going through now. Uh, this one is just your rectangles. I've just rounded the corners. Now with that, I could, let's say I want an all over pattern popped on him. I've got it's um, dark room door, background stamp, just the rubber. I have not put this on the foam so it won't go on acrylic blocks or in my stamp platform because I like them. I like my background, a lot of my backgrounds to be a bit wonky because what I like to do with them is I'll have this. Let's go with the sponge sugar this time. Cut this side because I think the other side's dirty. And I'm just, don't need much. I'm only covering that bit. What I'm going to do is hang on to my stamp, sit it down, and just give it a little bit. So where my fingers are going are actually going in further spots than the others. So it'll hopefully give a blended area. So some are lighter, some are darker. This is sponge sugar so that it's quite light anyway. If I then go round my edges, remembering to turn your ink pad as you go, what you've then got is another one. Now you could pop a stamped image on that. You could pop a quote on that. You could have some of your embellishments from other things that are just sitting there waiting to go. That you go, what am I gonna do with all these? Okay, so we're gonna sit you in there. Maybe, yes, there you go. Once they've all been in there for a while, they're fine. It's just starting them off. Okay, so you're in there. Okay, it's, this one is just one of those rectangles, a little bit higher. Um, I've got a sheet of these and I'll just sit it on, work it across, trace around it makes it so much easier which gives me then one for anything so you'll see with this one I pulled him out there it is again but just in the shorter version um, that's that stamp again but done in bundled sage with bird stamped on it there are so many different things that you can do with these guys um, when I was preparing for this tutorial I came across the ones from the tutorials last week now if I didn't have that birdhouse on there because I quite like that birdhouse this is one of the first stitching ones that we did last week now look look how it's changed the appearance of that again see what I mean these little guys you just make on a rainy day and you sit them and then all of a sudden you'll find areas that they can go. It's like it's been made for this size book. It wasn't. I hadn't even thought of doing one of these books at that stage. So that's all there is to it. The paper pad I had had lots of little bits and pieces. But that is depending on your paper pads and the paper that you use. Um, the Prima one I had didn't have little tags and all the rest. This one did, so I've opted to use these. And as I said, it had these beautiful, beautiful little cut, little gold edged butterflies, which I've then 
cut around ready to pop in. They're just, yeah, just awesome. So this one, you know, it can just go in like that and very easily go in like that. You know, we might just, just lightly go around the edges. It takes five seconds. Now, if I want, two ways I could do this. I could just stick him on like so. I could cut him across here and then just adhere him like that. And I've got a little another tuck pocket. So let's do that. Let's very quickly do that. So now he's not a tag. Just gonna give him the same edging. So now what he is, make sure I'm up the right way. Glue hasn't had the lid put on it again. Bear with me. Oh, here it comes. Right, so now, very quickly, all I've done is create another tuck pocket in there, sit you there, sit you there. Just like that. So what it's given me, we just use a piece of scrap here, but you can see, is ready for another little tuck in there. So many different ways that you can do these guys. I like that. I like that. So let's just pop a little bit of a butterfly. Look, I could just ramble now and fill this up. You can see the gist. It depends on the products that you have sitting at hand. Use your stash. Go back into your stash. Yeah, takes five seconds. Thanks, guys. For watching look at what you can do now go away and find all those little treehouse books that the kids have been stashing go away and find some little notebooks really that's all they are they're the size of a notebook go and have some fun and until next time keep crafting thanks guys